Welcome to Passion Week with Pastor. It's Saturday. Jesus died yesterday. All hope of Him being the Savior of the world, the Messiah, is gone. At least that's how the disciples and His followers see it. In fact, their emotions are a wreck. They are all over the place. They are full of fear. They are full of hopelessness. They are hurt. And there is uncertainty about their future. Think about the disciples. Their whole life for the last three and a half years has been around Jesus. He was their, their master, their teacher, their healer. He was their best friend. But he's gone. And his body is in a borrowed grave. The only thing that really was recorded in the Gospels concerning Saturday is in regards to what it says in Matthew chapter 27, verse number 62. And let's look at that. Now the next day that followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that the deceiver said, speaking of Jesus, while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Command therefore that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. And Pilate said unto them, Ye have a watch, go your way, make it as sure as you can. So they went and they made the sepulcher sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. I don't know if you caught this from Scripture, but the same religious leaders, those evil guys, those hypocrites, those vipers, those snakes, the same evil guys that accused Jesus of breaking the Sabbath law were doing it themselves. No wonder Jesus was calling them out over and over again throughout His ministry. But the reason for doing it was because they wanted to make sure that nobody would steal His body and His disciples wouldn't come and take it. But here's the reality of the situation on Saturday. Jesus is still dead. He is still in the grave. And they are probably terrified that the disciples and the, his followers are probably terrified that they're next. That they're next to be crucified because of their association with Jesus. They're grieving. They're also grieving very badly the loss of, of their friend and the loss of their teacher. They're also humiliated that they really believe that He was the Messiah. They're humiliated because they really believe that He was the Savior of the world. And so what happens on Saturday is doubt begins to creep in. Their emotions begin to escalate and their situation appears to be growing more bleak moment by moment. Scripture itself gives a little insight on maybe how the disciples felt. And this is actually later in Scripture, but it gives you an idea of their mindset. And it says, And a disciple named Cleopas and another disciple are walking on the road out of Jerusalem on Sunday. Now this is tomorrow. And there is a man, this man was actually Jesus. They don't know, that they really don't know, walking beside them who acts as if he doesn't know what has happened. And listen to their explanation because it tells where they were. In verse 19 it says, About Jesus of Nazareth they replied, He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priest and our rulers handed Him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified Him. But we had hoped. Did you hear that? Cleopas said, But we had hoped that He was the one who would redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. He said, we had hoped that He was the one. That gives you an idea 
of what Saturday was like for the followers of Jesus. Did you hear the hopelessness in them words? This was the hopelessness that all of them shared. They are confused. They are full of grief and disappointed in what happened on that dark day that we call Good Friday. On Saturday, they are literally frozen in fear. Remember on Thursday, Jesus takes time to warn them about their grief that's coming. He takes time to warn them about the disappointment and the doubt and even the silence that they will endure after the crucifixion. In John 16, 20 through 22 records, Jesus saying, I tell you the truth, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will return to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you, now is your time of grief. But I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. Jesus is talking about his predicted death. And he's telling them, guys, this, this is going to be the darkest uh, day that you're going to face. It's going to be the darkest experience. Saturday's going to be the darkest time that you've ever experienced. Jesus knows the silence that his followers are going to be confronted with. However, in the above scripture, Jesus is saying, just hold on. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel just yet. He offers them hope beyond the silence. You see, we don't understand God's silence either, do we? And we face it at different times. But may I encourage you that there is hope beyond our silence? I don't know what silent silence looks like for you today. Maybe you are waiting for maybe you are waiting in silence for a healing that hasn't come. Maybe you are sitting in silence waiting for your marriage to restore, but it hasn't happened yet. Maybe you are longing for that child to return home and to return to the Lord Jesus Christ, but it hasn't happened yet. Right now, maybe your silence is a financial struggle due to this COVID-19 pandemic that is all over our world. I can tell you silence is, is tough. The disciples had lost hope completely. They were confused and shocked by the silence of that Saturday that was upon them. Their doubt caused them to abandon the cause completely and stop believing in what Jesus taught. But despite the silence, Jesus promises them joy is coming. You see, when we face pain, grief, misunderstanding, and confusion... In those times when we are left hopeless in the midst of God's silence and unanswered prayers. At those times that are so dark because it's Saturday. We can hold on to this promise. One that Jesus gave his disciples some 2,000 years ago. Joy is coming. A joy that no one can take away from us. I can't wait to be able to preach to you tomorrow tomorrow on Resurrection Sunday and give an answer to your silence. Thank you for joining Passion Week with Pastor. Join us tomorrow at 1045 a.m. for our service. There is hope. From my house to yours, may you have a blessed Easter. God bless.